Hey, Joe, it's Patrick. Um, I hey. just wanted to uh, say that, uh, hey, maybe we should uh, give Roman and all the other wrestlers a little bit of a uh, leeway because it's not them that are creating the endings and creating all the crap pay-per-view crap. It's that stuff, you know, it's the yeah. people that are in the background that are making all this junk that the wrestlers have to go out and try and perform for a crowd that they know is going to just not go over well. Mm, I don't know so, if they know that, though. That's all I really had to say, man. I tried to call to get on, but I couldn't uh, pass. Hey, Patrick, thank you, man, for the call. I appreciate that. Well, this is a voicemail that was left. I have a lot of voicemails that are left. We're still trying to get the phones to work perfectly right. By the way, monetize this episode 160 is up here on JCS, uh, just for the people that didn't see the upload and whatever else. i uh, listen. Dude, like, I don't blame... Ro Stop it, Melly. Stop it. Jesus Christ. Goddamn dog's going to tear the floor up over there. Uh, Roman Reigns. I don't I don't blame these guys. I do blame creative because they're the ones in charge. They're the ones doing this. They're the ones that have to get this right, and they're not getting it right. So I do blame the writers, and I do blame the decision makers, and I do blame those people. I don't actually blame actual Roman Reigns all the time. You know what I mean? But I a little I, a little bit with Reigns, though, right? Because he just seems like he's a company guy. He goes along and does what he does. You know, if, if Stone Cold Steve Austin had been a company guy, wouldn't he have stayed doing the ringmaster? Now, I don't exactly remember going back to the stories about Stone Cold Steve Austin and all that other stuff, you know, with what he did exactly. But I thought he pushed Vince McMahon at some point, you know what I mean, to... to Push them, push them towards a different character, towards something different. Maybe tell me if I'm wrong. For the people out there that listen to all the shoot interviews and listen to Stone Cold's podcast enough, I thought that Steve Austin had a hand in trying to do something different with his character. You know, Roman is out there just like, hey, whatever. You know, I don't give a fuck. Like, let's just keep doing the same thing. You know, I don't hear anything or see any signs that Roman wants to fight against the system. I mean, when you're, he seems like the type that's been handed the uh, candy baton and told he's the guy. And instead of saying like, but, but then again, yeah, you can make that argument. Ringmaster wasn't exactly the guy, right? They, they didn't tell Steve Austin he was the guy. So if you're, if you're told that you're the guy, you're the dude carrying the torch to the next uh, generation or whatever it is, you know, you're not going to argue, I guess, right? For the most, you're not going to be like, oh, you know, fucking, I think you're wrong, Vince. I think that the, I think that this. 90% sold out crowd and I'm the guy. I think that somehow this is all wrong and you're you're incorrect. I should go heal, you know. So maybe you can't blame Reigns at all for that, I suppose. I think that some well well all of well many of us for well well I believe 40% of the audience thinks that Reigns is completely booked wrong and in the wrong position. And maybe the other 40% is complacent and like the other 20% like love him to death. I don't know. I think that's, I don't know if those are the numbers. I think they are the numbers though. I think they're pretty close to that. And, um, you know, it's hard to say. So I think he's just stuck in that bubble, that PG, you know, everything becomes very PG and watered down. And, you know, WWE is getting in a scary situation right now. When you, when your company was sold, you know, when your company went public, and there's all these different powers that be that be and chair people and cogs in the wheel with toys and PG and things like that. And and you keep in mind like entropy and that all systems are kind of breaking down or at least evolving, de-evolving, whatever it is. You know, you look at MTV, right? When MTV first started, it was so carefree, it was crazy music television, and then eventually they started adding edgy programming like Beavis and Butthead and. You know, all that crazy shit that they did back then in the 90s, like the early 90s to mid 90s to even, you know, once they started getting into the late 90s, they sort of went from this sort of rebel, like, you know, they had a lot of rap and metal going on and shit like that. And then they really turned, started turning into the teeny bop crap, right? And then they started going even further into that when you got into like the, you know, the real life house and whatever the fuck else they the real world and all that other stuff. And then, so like you had, you know, originally you had like cool alternative people like listening to MTV, like artistic people and people who were kind of, you know, edgy characters, right? In the nineties, listening to MTV. You didn't know it. You didn't always necessarily have like the, the, the poppy little chicks always listening to it, but that's what it became eventually. 
And then eventually there was no more music, you know, and now, and now we're at where we are with MTV, which is there's really no more music. It's just weird shows about my first period and my boyfriend's cheating on me with my my former dildo that I used to use on myself, but he stole it from me. And now he, whatever, just weird shows that don't have anything to do with music whatsoever. And so, like, eventually, like, WWE is, is like, de is, like, de-evolving to me right now. That, it's in, like, a spiral, right? It, it was it, it was in a complacent spiral in 95, but it's in some kind of weird corporate delusion right now that it wasn't in in 1995 because in, in okay, right, like, in, go back to even 93. Let's pretend that 93, right, 93, 94, 95, ni even 96, like, things weren't doing the greatest. But, you know, by 97, you know, they got themselves out of that funk. How long have we been in the funk now? They don't they don't think they're in a funk at all, by the way, over there. I don't think. Other than this news that Vince McMahon said that, you know, that's eye-opening that people left. If that's really a quote or really what he said, which we still really don't know, um, is we saying that it's eye-opening that people left um, during the Roman Reigns-Samoa Joe match? Well... I would think it'd be more eye-opening. See, even though the even though the revenue streams are coming in and they're 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 keeping their they're making more money than they ever made, and all these other things so, supposedly. But when you look at how when you look at ticket numbers of the last five years, you know that they're going down. When you look at your own production, you know that the pyro's gone down. You know that the ticket sales have gone down. You know that the ratings have gone down. Those are all factual things that have happened. The ratings have gone down. Fact. The The house show attendance has gone down. Fact. The live show attendance has gone down. Fact. Your your network is, is, is stuck at that 2 million area. You know, I would look at those. Forget the revenue streams. Forget the fact that the prince of Saudi Arabia or whatever the fuck, just gave you $200 million. You know what I mean? It would, it would be like if I'm doing my show, and my by the way, my, you know, my numbers have drifted around because of the problems having to go from channel to channel. You know, it'd be like my numbers going down, but the money going up and me thinking everything's good. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be like, okay, it would be like, I, I, like I have 55,000 subs right now, right? It, it would be like if... 20,000 subscribers unsub tomorrow. All right, my, more minor than that because we don't really have all these half the subs I have are dead anyway. Everybody's subs mostly are dead. 15% of them are the real active people on every channel. It's that way. But it would be like if I was getting 100,000 views a week, right? I'm getting 100 and I'm getting more than that. Let's, actually, let's use my real numbers. Let's use my real numbers. I'm doing about 250,000 views a week on YouTube, right? 250,000 views a week when you add up all the, all my shows and videos that are being watched. Um, and that's down because I used to do, we used to do about 30, three, 300,000, 350,000 views a week on my show. Now I do about 250,000. So, you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm constantly thinking about that off air. Like what, what, what more can we do? You know, what else can we do now? Since those numbers went down, I have added new revenue streams. I'm just like the WWE. I've added Patreon with more content. You know what I mean? We've had more live shows that you can donate into and things like that so the money the money is up but the numbers are down and recently my numbers have gone back up again we started to go up a little bit right we're on the trend up so that's what i want to do i want to keep trending up because the more people that watch the more eventually revenue you'll make and the more successful you'll be and you'll be able to keep going on but i would i would be panicking if my numbers keep going were to keep going down or to, to go down I would lose my fucking mind, even if I was making money, or, or more money than I ever made before. I'd be like, cool, we're making more money than ever before. Where's everybody going? You know? Because I'd be thinking tomorrow that money's going to be going away because those people might not be watching now. And it seems like WWE just never reacts to that whatsoever. They're just like, oh, but whatever, we're making the most money. Who cares? And now the Prince gave him a $200 head start, $200,000 head start. It, it would be like if I lost, lost 50,000 views a week going forward. I lose 50,000 views a week and like my videos are getting half as many views. And then some guy was like, Hey Joe, you know, I listen to your show and I love it. Here's $10,000. Here's $10,000.
And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm just going to keep doing things the same way because this is where we're kicking ass. It's like not necessarily, you know, because your numbers and your views are going down. You're lucky. Now, that guy had some money and he wanted to help you out. But what's going on with the 20% of the other people that left? Something's not right. And that's how I would compare it to WWE. And I think that they're... Uh, they need to get a little more realistic on it. My name is Joe Crony, guys. Hit that sub button down below. Subscribe to my other channels, youtube.com slash corrupted podcast, where we go live from right now. While I have the strike on this channel, I can't go live from YouTube here. Also, subscribe to uh, youtube.com slash JCS Gaming. That's my gaming channel. And then right here, Joe Cronin Joe. Hit that sub button. Hit that like button if you like the video. Leave a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you. And thank you guys for all the voicemails. And we'll see you tonight after Monday Night Raw for the Raw review right here. Uh, well, not right here. We'll be over on Corrupted because we have to go live over there. Uh, but, yeah. And uh, we're also going to be announcing a 24-hour streaming site that's going to be coming to RageInternetRadio.com. Uh, it's been years since we've tried this, so we're going to try it again two years later. Bigger audience. And uh, people on Patreon, what will happen is you'll get sent the password every month, and you'll have access. You'll get a new password every month. You'll have access 24-7 to the live feed. So not only will you be able to listen to the, to the shows 24-7, they'll just be playing all the time if you want to put stuff in the background, but also um, when we go live for Monetize This or Corrupted or, or Out of Nowhere or Wrestling Show, whatever it is, um, you can listen over there live too, uh, RageInnetRadio.com. It's an experiment. We're going to find out if it works. Uh, right now for 5 and $10 patrons, you can unlock the password and test it with me. It's in beta this week. It won't be actually out until next week, but it is out right now. You can go listen to it. It's RageInnetRadio.com. Uh, become a patron too if you want to. If you want to get into it, it's a little bonus perk for VIP ten dollars patrons. We don't know yet what we're gonna do with it. We're just sort of testing this idea out of if people would like to be able to go on their phone and be like, "Oh, RageNetRadio dot com, listen," and then the, you're listening to live shows. You know, like 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 radio. Like it's like throwing on your favorite radio station if you have. Maybe you even listen to radio anymore. I don't know. Uh, throwing on whatever station and it just fucking plays. Like it's you know. Uh, all my shows will be rotated on it. Some of my interviews will be on it. Other people's shows are going to be on it. Um, we're going to be hiring some shows, um, signing some people. So there'll just be shows playing all the fucking time, and it will be. Uh, I think it will be a good time. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it works. If, if people seem to like it, hey, great. And if, if eventually people don't like it, well, it won't work out. We'll find out though. We're in, we're in beta, as I said this week. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you tonight for the raw review. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at Real Cronin. And uh, if you guys like what I do, support the show on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Read all the perks down below.